It's been interesting. And I'm live. Hey. Hi. Hello. How are you? Great. Oh, well, I hope you're doing better. I could not cover both of my bases. And there's, you know, in between, but why did I just pull these out? So I guess. Honestly, one of the things that I plan on talking about is something I would typically see on my other channel, but that's fine. Um, I can talk about it over here. We're all adults. Um, I wanted to use the Diceology cards, and then I saw the Tea Leaf Oracle. I keep wanting to call them Tea Leaf Oracle cards, the Tea Leaf Fortune cards, and I had to pull these out too. It's been such an interesting lunation cycle. Let me walk you through the past, like, 30, 36, 72 to 96. <laughs> That's where my brain is. Hours of my life. So a few days ago, I randomly got a call from somebody. There's, uh, It's all about positionality, positioning ourselves to receive, right? There are things that we work on that get us in position. There are other things outside of the realm of our purview or control that also sort of align. And then when everything is where it's supposed to be or where it needs to be, connections happen. And so I started updating my LinkedIn a minute ago, uh, not too long after I graduated. And I had clipped a few jobs there I was looking in some other places, and one day, I just decided to, uh, I was going to apply for one of them, like just one, but I ended up applying for a few. The next day, I randomly get a phone call from someone, and they're hiring, basically, or he was a recruiter, so he was just general, right? Like getting some info, seeing what I'm interested in, blah, 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 whatever. I'm like, you know, it doesn't hurt. And I'm also like, well, you know, my resume is on the internet. So this is why I put it on the internet. And also I've been wanting opportunities to come to me. So this falls in line with what I've been wanting, right? And I was like, okay, cool, cute, cool, work. Um, and then I talked to him that day. The next day we schedule a 30-minute like going through my resume, follow-up type thing, just to get some more information. Now that morning, I wake up to a call from someone within the same company, different place, with an opportunity that sounds very, very, very much so like what I want. Now, it's not that this first person didn't have an opportunity that I wanted, but the second one aligned a lot more. Uh, but I missed that call because I decided to sleep in a little that day before my meeting. Um, and so I played phone tag with that person. Uh, didn't get her that day. The next day, I was like, oh, well, maybe she got all the information that she needed from my call with this other person because, you know, they build out my profile and they see the notes. And so. Ooh, oh, that's more cards than I thought. And so then the next day. I don't hear from her at all. I'm like, oh, well, at first I was like, well, if I don't hear from her today, I'll call her tomorrow. And then I was like, well, maybe she got everything she needed, right? And so remember positionality, because that's a thing that's on my brain, I guess, right now, with a lot of stuff. I don't get a call from her that day, but something else happens that day. Something I've been like every every area of my life that I can manifest something in, I am. Uh, so that's career, that's relationships, that's like relocation, everything. And you know, I've been doing all the work that I need to do when it presents itself because I'm like, I want a lot, so I'm gonna have to do a lot. And since I want it, I'm gonna do it. And so in one of those sectors, something kind of fell apart. And I was like, you know what? Where I am in life right now, I'm not necessarily fighting for anything. The things that are meant to be in my life will be. And the things that aren't meant to be in my life won't be. 
And the things that are on their way out will find a way out. And the things that are on their way in will find their way in. Positionality. And so that liberated some things. And it opened up plans, I guess. Not necessarily plans, but options. So the next morning after that liberation happens, I get a call from this girl. Again, I miss it because I'm sleeping in. Um, I catch her later. And we talk. She's building up my profile. She already has some information from the other guy. We're talking. And she's like, oh, well, I actually have, like, that company is hiring. And so I was like, oh, cute work. Um, and she's like, yeah, so, like, let's just schedule, like, a little 30-minute interview or whatever. I can give you some more information. You'll, like, there'll also be some people from the team or blah, 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 whatever. That'll be on the call. I was like, okay. I was feeling, like, really good about it. Now, in my mind, as the day moved on, I'm like, it's interesting that she didn't talk to me yesterday. But a moment of liberation happened yesterday. And then she called me this morning. And because yesterday happened, I'm more available today for what she's offering me. Also, the like the job site is like 20 minutes away from one of my best friends. I was like, okay, cute work. Because I was joking about like moving in with that friend. <laughs> And I was like, well, hey, I'm, I'm going to be working 20 minutes away. We might as well be roommates. Um, but something about it, like, just wasn't sitting right with me as the day moved on. And I'm like, first, it was feeling like good. It was this opportunity gets me a lot closer to my end goal a lot faster than I had anticipated. I thought I was either going to have to spend quite a number of years in the industry or get my master's and then spend, get my master's, have more of an opportunity to get right in or spend less time in the industry or get my PhD and then like get in where I want to be. But this was an opportunity from the start to be within that realm in that arena and there were like three different positions that the company was hiring for. She was like, I'll read you the one that I think like you'd be the most interested in first. And then I'll re also read you the other ones. And I was like, oh, that third one sounds like really good. She was like, really? Like, why? Can you tell me? I was like, I don't know. Something about it just like, it's not what I was expecting. But hearing it causes some kind of like resonance within me. Um it's just my, I don't I was like, I don't know. It's like out of left field. It wasn't what I was expecting, but it seems really interesting. And then I was like, well, I can see that like that first position though, it would get me a lot closer to where it is that I want to end up. Now, my journey isn't necessarily to start where I'm going to end. Like that's not necessarily the way I want to do it. I want to experience many different aspects of what it is that I want to do so that by the time I get there, I have more of a knowledge of the process as a whole rather than just the part that I like focus on or whatever. Right. It, it sort of like breeds uh, interdisciplinary competence and things like that. Um, like if you're an engineer and you have to talk to a scientist and also you have to talk to the line operator or whatever, it's like it would be helpful to have like a little bit of the scientist lingo, a little bit of the line operator lingo to communicate things. And it's not that that's necessarily necessary, but it'd be helpful. And then I start thinking, I'm like, if that thing that happened last night wouldn't have happened, this would be not less of an option. Because honestly, I think it still would have been just as viable. It would have been. But it was just interesting the way that the events lined up. But I was still like feeling like the later it got in the day, the more like unsettled I felt. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just do the interview anyway. It could be nerves. It can be whatever. Well, not really whatever. I'm just like, oh, something about this don't feel right. 
I almost canceled that night, but I was like, it doesn't hurt to like do the interview and to just see what's up. So the next day I wake up an hour and a half before my interview. And this is on my behalf. I could have done more research that night. And I do a little bit of research and I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't want to involve myself in these energies. Um, apparently, it's a company that's recently gone through uh, some like restructuring and things of that nature. But from what I've seen, like I went to the company website and it sounded really pretty. It sounded like what I wanted. But then when I start doing other research, it's like, well, it seems like the modest operandi, I guess. It's like the way that they conduct business, I guess, doesn't necessarily align with what I was getting the mission to be from what was written on the website. And I'm like, yeah, no, like I don't. Mm. And now, of course, there is a part of me that's like, you know, this is only temporary. I need to build experience right now so that I can get more to what I actually want to do. But it's also like I don't have to compromise myself, my integrity or my authenticity to get what I want in any of these areas and aspects of life that I've been manifesting things in, in the relationship area, the career area or the location area. And so I hit her up. I was like, hey, like, I'm actually, like, not interested anymore. But, and I was like, I was going to do the interview anyway, but, you know, I I figured I'd rather save both you and I time and also the company time because they're looking for people. And she was like, oh, she sent me an email. I emailed her. She was like, oh, like, can you tell me, like, what made you change your mind about the position slash company? And I was typing my email and she gave me a call and I told her on the phone. I was like, girl, look, I found this. I found this and I found something else. And as I was thinking about it more, it's like something about this position as well. Like maybe that's why the other one excited me more than this one. Maybe it goes to show that I know that somewhere along the lines of when I started school, when I graduated, somewhere between when I started and when I graduated, my interests shifted, but the reason didn't like I still want to do what I set out to do in the beginning I just might want to go about accomplishing that end in a different way and yeah it was just like and of course you know I had the one person who was like because I already knew something about it didn't feel right and my one person was like you know God is still in control or like like you don't have to compromise to get like what you want like the lord will provide and blah 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 not blah 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 but you know the rest and then someone else was like oh like what like why why didn't you take it is it because like you know it wasn't the area that you were looking for and i was like no it just didn't seem right she's like oh what was it this i'm like nah like before all of that something about like before i found out what i found out that made me not want to do it i was already feeling like something about it wasn't right not that it was too good to be true, because it wasn't. It was in some ways uh, not too good to be true. It was what I was looking for in some ways, and it wasn't in other ways. Um, but beyond that, it was like something just didn't sit right with me. And come to find out, this is something that like I talked about it maybe on this channel as well. I'm a very principled person. I can sometimes be an extremely principled person, but I know that not everyone holds the same principles that I do. And so the standard that I hold myself to is different than the standard that I hold other people to because everybody else ain't me. That's a lesson that I've learned through living life. Um, but at the same time, I'm not gonna compromise my integrity or my principles and it just wasn't a fit. Like, I don't think it was necessarily bad in general, like overall as a whole, necessarily. It just wasn't for me. And that's been something that I've experienced in a few different sectors. Like I said, the ones I was manifesting things in, relationships, career, 
location, travel, relocation, whatever. And I was talking to my friend about it yesterday after, you know, I canceled the interview. And I was like, it's like I'm clearing space for something. I don't know what it is yet, but I know it's coming. And maybe because I know it's coming, because I can feel it coming, I could also feel that that wasn't it. Potentially, maybe not. Uh, but I was like, Embracing paradox and contradiction, as we do. I'm like, part of me like doesn't need to know exactly what it is, but another part of me wants to get more sure on like what it is that I want, what it is that I don't want, and maybe to look at the ways that I can get that outside of what I was necessarily expecting. And that's something that happened a few times um, in the conversation with the first representative. And then I was talking to the second representative. She's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that. I'm like, well, you do now, girl. Um, but with the first representative, because he asked me what I was looking for, I'm like, I'm looking for something with high impact. Like, I want the work I do to make a difference. Um, I'm not necessarily as concerned about the dollars necessarily, but like, I want it to mean something. And he brought up some other things that are technically within the umbrella of things that I do, just not the, the little sub umbrella that I was in. And I was like, oh, that stuff is like really interesting. Hey, Zelda, how you doing? He was like, uh, and then he was like, have you ever considered this? And I was like, actually, like two years ago, roughly, was that 2018 or 2019? A few years ago, I went to my best friend's mother's retirement party. And me and my best friend, we had the same major. Like, we have similar tracks, but different, like, areas. But we, we fall within the same umbrella. Uh, just different sub-umbrellas. Adjacent sub-umbrellas, but different. Um, and she was like, yeah, she had an opportunity for my best friend and you know, me as well. She was like, yeah, you should like look into this too. So I looked into that. It was something that had never even crossed my radar. I was not even thinking about it. It was so far off of my radar that that was the no way zone until it was presented. And I was like, huh, well, actually. <laughs> um, and he brought it up. I was like, yeah, I've actually, you know, I've been exposed to it and it's something that I've been thinking about. And it's actually that thing Maybe I know where it is that I want to go now. Because <laughs> it was that thing, thinking about that thing, and then actually, you know, following up on that, that opened me up to different ways and different routes through which I want to accomplish what it is that I want to do. And he brought it up. And now I'm like, maybe I should look into that. Hold up, wait. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my notes real quick so I don't forget. Because even in the moment when I was talking to him, I was like, yeah, you know, back in the day before I was presented with an opportunity, um, now when I was presented with this opportunity, I was still quite a ways from graduation. Funny how things work out. <laughs> That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Uh... Thanks, Zelda. I'm glad to hear that you're well. Um, hold on, wait. Let me... Things to look into before I forget. I was like, this is an entryway. Um, all right, not an entryway. This is a, a path, a further down the line path that has recently presented itself to me in a way that I wasn't really thinking about it before. But now it, it honestly makes more sense for the person that I have become and who I am still becoming than where I was before. And again, it's like, it leads me to the same, like the nature 
of the thing that I would be doing is essentially the same. It's just accomplished through a different way. Um, there we go. And he was like, yeah, sometimes I, I talk to people about this and they like, they kind of freak out or whatever. This is four cards. Um, so that happened. I should tell her about that too, because she actually brought that up after I was presented with the opportunity as well. And if he brought it up, then that means that there's opportunity there. Interesting. Yeah, I'll have to look into that further later. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Um, and maybe if I hadn't done all the things that I've been doing within the past two years now, yeah, like two years, um, I would have been more eager to sacrifice a little bit of myself here or sacrifice a little there. It's like, oh, it's just, you know, getting my foot in the door. I don't have to necessarily stick with this and blah, 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 whatever. But honestly, I don't know, with all of like the self-love and stuff that it, I was encouraged to learn last year, I'm not going to compromise my worth either. It's also like a self-worth thing. I've realized. Now, had I not, again, had I not done everything to have the perspective of that I have now, maybe I wouldn't have even thought of it as a self-worth thing, but it most definitely is a self-worth thing. And I'm like, I'm worth more than this. I don't have to settle here. So I'm not, I'm also not going to pour any more time or energy or effort into anything. That's not like going to bear fruit. All right. Like, let me save us both the time and not even do this because I'm not going to compromise in ways that I'm not going to compromise. I can be flexible, I can grow, I can mature, but I'm not going to lop off limbs or branches to try to fit onto your little window seal. Uh, so that was interesting. That was like that piece of my life. Also, so I have this degree that came, hold up. I'm still waiting on my degree to come this year. My degree came when I didn't earn it faster than it's coming when I did. But this one came last year. But I had incompletes. Somehow it didn't register in their system. <laughs> so I was like, um, since I have my degree, like, do I still have to do the work? And my professor was like, yeah. But now you know what it'll look like when you get it. Um, this is the old one. Still waiting on the new one. But it's like, I kind of like got the degree or I graduated before I officially graduated. And that's interesting. And also, like this, I was at the store last night. So this is going to be me talking about like little synchronicities in the beginning. And then whatever cards I'll talk about, maybe. I, I probably will, because I want to pull some cards. <laughs> um, but I was in the store last night. We were going to check out. We had to get a, a gift card. So we were in this little section that we never really go to. Again, positionality, I guess. Um, and I saw some everyday calendars. I was like, oh, my gosh. An everyday calendar would be so cute. Like, my Neptune is in Capricorn basically on my 10th uh, house cusp. So it's in my ninth house, but it's like two degrees away from my 10th house. And so my Uranus is conjuncting my Neptune. But anyway, I'm going to have a Neptune. I, I'm in a Neptune sextile right now because my Neptune is 20 degrees Capricorn. Neptune is like 18 degrees Pisces. Oh, snap. I think I knew that. What does that do? I don't know. Um, anyway, so like cubicle job with like, I have my little like everyday calendar. I got pictures of my friends and family 
uh, I got like my little computer or whatever and little decorations. I have my coworkers that I talk to by the water cooler. Sometimes we hang out or go to a bar maybe after work. Like that is a fantasy that I can like get into. I know a lot of people are like, oh, if I had an office job, it would drive me crazy. But I'm like, I actually wouldn't mind an office job. I, I think that'd be kind of cute. So I saw these everyday calendars. Now on the front, they were like things that I wasn't necessarily interested in. Then I saw like um, one that was like word games or something. I was like, oh, word games are cute. But I was like, let me let me go to the other side of this. Because on it was like a square. On the front side was the everyday calendars. On the sides were the calendar calendars. And I was like, I don't want a calendar calendar. But then I checked out the back side. And the back side had more everyday calendars. And I found the old farmer's old farmer's almanac everyday calendar i was like oh my gosh i want it so i got it let's see what it says for today but after i bought this calendar <laughs> after i bought this calendar and i checked out and i left the store i was like wait i already have a calendar for this year cuz when i came home a year ago i saw an old calendar that i had it's a Nintendo calendar from 2010. But when I found the calendar, I was like, well, when is this going to be good for? And it's 2021. So this calendar from 2010, it's not an everyday calendar. It's like an every month calendar. Um, it's actually good this year. And speaking of like decades long cycles and things like that, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Here's the front, and then like on the back. Now all the games are gonna be super old. Back when Club Nintendo was lit, there's Samus. I've never played Metroid Prime. Pikmin. I've never played Pikmin. Oh, here it is. You see that? How do I maybe? There we go. Club Nintendo 2010. This calendar is good for this year. I was like, oh, well, now I have two calendars. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I forgot that I literally just looked it up. Well, it's like a year ago now. I was like, oh, it'll be good next year. I'm not really a calendar. I've had a calendar. One, I have, I've had one calendar. <laughs> and it was a hot guy's calendar that one of my best friends got me for Christmas or my birthday. I think it was Christmas. And I put it up in my room and my great grandfather, <laughs> my great grandfather came with my grandpa. to pick me up from school one day and to take me home for like a weekend or for whatever. And I didn't even think about it, but, you know, I just had a calendar with a shirtless dude up on the wall. It's fine. Ah. But this is the one. And I'm like, I don't want to tear these, though. I don't want to tear them. And I don't know if you're supposed to, but let's go to January 16. I think they lumped the weekends together. Yeah. January 16 and 17. This is uh, 17th. Oh, it's Benjamin Franklin's birthday tomorrow. Oh, the key in the kite. Look at that. See? Synchronicity. It says, in his will, Benjamin Franklin left 1,000 pounds each to Boston and Philadelphia, a portion of which could not be distributed until 200 years later. In 1990, the funds were worth millions. Why is this a theme today? Well, let's see if you can see it. There you go. Why is this a theme today? Because I just thought about my degree with the calendars. Like, I got my degree a year before now. I got this calendar 11 years ago. Wherever it went. This one. I got this calendar 11 years ago. The Club Nintendo one. And... Ben Franklin left money that accumulated over the space of 200 years. 
one ten two hundred. That's twenty eleven or two eleven. It also increases, you know, single digit, double digit, triple digit. And it reminds me, um, for a it came out a lot in the I Ching. <laughs> There's a the word. It came out in the I Ching. It was like those who. It was like those in service to the kingdom should not accept rewards for their work. If you can forego a reward now, it'll pay off much more later. And it used to come out all the time. And that's when I was like, you know, if you provide a service to people and if you can afford to charge a little bit less in a time of uncertainty, then maybe consider it. And you'll, like, it's not to be rewarded for it in the end, but I don't know. It's a fine line. And that goes back to the job I'm I'm talking about. There's a fine line between like being compensated for your work and needing to participate in exchange because exchange happens for services and for goods mm -hmm. and profiting off of people or not taking circumstances into account. And that's the reason why I'm not going to be working at the company that, you know, I was just approached by <clears throat> a few days ago. Because I don't want to get into what I'm getting into to make money. Like, I'm not getting into it to make money. I'm not getting into it to profit off of people who are in need of whatever service or good that I provide. And if that's how the company plays out, I'm not interested. And that's basically what I told her. She was like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah. Like, I know a lot of people do a lot of things because they make good money. I'm not one of them. Anyway, I feel like I should find that one. I know it was something in fire. It was something. I'll see if I can find it. It used to come out all the time. <clears throat> yeah. Actually, I'm not going to go looking for it because that's basically the gist of what it said. Um, so that's this. This is the calendar thing, which is interesting. And that's all about time as well, I guess. All of that is about time and timing. And time and timing, when we are involved in the clockwork mechanism of whatever we're waiting to happen, that's positionality. Us being where we need to be, having done what we've needed to do in the time that we needed to do it, so that when the other pieces arrive, we can, you know, intertwine and enmesh ourselves and start moving in the ways we need to move to make the clock work. Clockwork. Clockwork tower, that's a thing, right? Is that in like, if that's in like, uh, Zeld, uh, Madra's Mask, if that's in the Legend of Zelda Madra's Mask, that's the one Legend of Zelda game I refuse to play. It's too stressful and it's scary. <laughs> no. I mean, would I be as scared now of it? Probably not, but I don't need to stress myself like that. Having three days to save the whole world and then you go back to the beginning if you... Uh, nah. Clockwork. Angel? Hmm? What's Clockwork Angel? It's a book. Oh my gosh, I have a book. Right here. It's called Sabriel. Sabriel ends in an E-L. That could be an angel's name. There are a lot of L angels. The L Elohim. Clockwork Angel is the first installment in the Infernal Devices trilogy by Cassandra Clare. After the death of her aunt, Tessa Gray is sent a ticket to travel to London by her brother Nathaniel. 
London. <laughs> That's interesting. I had a dream maybe a week ago that I was in London with one of my friends, Nathan. And I sent him a text. I was like, I had a dream that we were in London last night. He was like, it's a good dream, I hope. I was like, yeah, it was chill vibes. Wow. Sinks all over the place. Um, anyway, Clockwork Tower is what I was actually... Oh. Okay, maybe this is a lot of stuff then. Yeah. Clock Tower. No, not Clock Tower. Anyway, Clockwork Tower. Shovel Knight. I've never played Shovel Knight. I don't know. Anyway. That's the thing. Positionality and timing. Uh, when we talk about divine timing, you know, we're also talking about positionality. And if you're not doing the things that you need to do, then it's almost like it doesn't matter how long you wait. So I was looking for this calendar. Focus. Yeah, there we go. Looking for this calendar. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> and I came across <laughs> this book. Now, Zammy. My first dog, my first love. She chewed up the book cover for this book. And I was like, oh, like, who gave me this book? And then I see this, and I'm like, oh, so uh, I guess this is a book that I somehow ended up with. Maybe this is a book that the library was going to get rid of, and so I took it. I don't remember. But, and this is my handwriting. <laughs> 212. 04. I don't remember what 806 is, though. No, it was due on the 12th. What is 806? Maybe it was my. This is like 202, 704, 704, 300. I don't know. Y'all see that? There's my handwriting. Never turned in, apparently, because it didn't get crossed out. I have another book, <laughs> also from middle school, that I just happened to end up with. Oh, she really did a number on this book cover. Um, and I was just going to read the back of the book. I know there were a few books in this series. I don't even know how far I got into it. <gasps> the Rabbit. The Rabbit had been run over minutes before. Its pink eyes were glazed and blood-stained. Its clean white fur. Its pink eyes were glazed and blood-stained. Its pink white fur. Unnaturally clean fur. For it had just escaped from a bath. It still smelled faintly of lavender water. Oh, there's a few more things. Lavender water, but also the rabbit, the white rabbit. I was telling somebody about a dream I had. Speaking of angels and clockwork angels and towers, speaking of angels and towers, I had a dream, I think summer 2019. Yeah, summer 2019. About an angel and someone who fell in love with an angel and the angel that had fallen in love with the person and when they took true love's kiss, the person woke up imprisoned and the angel had vanished. And he ended up getting out and there was this character that guided him through. Oh my gosh, and I just saw it. I just saw this too. This is crazy. Oh my gosh, look at the time. It's 2.11. You see that? 2.11. 200 years, 10 years, or 11 years, and then one year. It should have been 212. No, because it was 2010. I guess that's how I did the 10 plus 1 plus 200. I don't know. Anyway, synchronicity is abound, friends. Um, I just saw 
because there was this like a sigil that he made on the wall that allowed him to travel between space and time and dimensions, well, space time. And I, in the dream, it was easier to just refer to him as the white rabbit when I was telling my friend about the dream. So I was just like, oh, the white rabbit had drawn something on the wall. And then we went from dimension to dimension, looking at all of these places that we had gone to together, looking for that angel that never appeared. Turns out the angel had more than just disappeared off of my radar. She was also off of Angel HQ's radar. And they thought that I had something to do with it or that the traveling person had something to do with it. Traveling person thought he was tricked by the angel like some kind of bad genie situation where he ended up in the bottle that she was in. And they, at the end of the dream, ended up deciding to work together to find her. But I referred to him as the White Rabbit. And I guess Clockwork Angel. You know, moving between space-time. I can see that. Um, but yeah. That was like literally the first, like chapter one, the first sentence. Or the first paragraph of the first chapter. Was about the White Rabbit. Anyway, it says, and the dude's name is Garth Nix. Now, Nix means night, right? Also a goddess of the night, NYX. I can't remember what pantheon. I want to say Egyptian, but then I want to say Greek. I don't know why I want to say Egyptian, because I don't think Egyptian would have a Nix. Pretty sure it's Greek. Um, it says, praise for Garth Nix's Sabriel, a tale of dark secrets, deep love, and dangerous magic. Sabriel is a winner, a fantasy that reads like realism. Here is a world with the same solidity and four-dimensional authority as our own, created with invention, clarity, and intelligence. I congratulate Garth Nix, and I look forward to reading his next piece of work, Philip Pullman. I think Garth Nix has created a really remarkable and persuasive world and done it in the grand style of high fantasy and heroic romance with some wonderful twists and turns. His Sabriel is a heroine truly worthy of that role, Lloyd Alexander. Rich, complex, involving, hard to put down. The, this first novel is excellent high fantasy. Starred review, Publishers Weekly. The action charges along at a gallop. A page turner for sure. Starred review, ALA book list. An ALA notable book. Winner of the Aurealis Award for Excellence in Australian Science Fiction. It's Australian. Who knew? Also, Gearbox Australia makes Borderlands 3. <laughs> and I've been playing, I played a lot of Borderlands yesterday. And a lot of the characters have like Australian accents, or at least a few of them do. So, hey, shout out to Australia. And one of my good friends is the one who actually recommended this to me back in the day. I think there was Larry O, another one. Um, he was like, oh, this series of books. Uh, he was like, oh, this series of books is really good. I'm just looking at like this sash of bells that she has. Synchronicity abounds, friends. That's interesting. Uh, so let's look and see what Nix is up to, and then I'll actually talk about what I got on here to talk about. Because this wasn't necessarily it. <laughs> NYX, Goddess of the Night. I know, like, I feel like I've read about her lately. But I don't know which story she would have popped up in. Okay, let's consult Wikipedia. Is Zeus afraid of Nyx? Is Zeus scared of Nyx? Why would Zeus be afraid of Nyx? I'm confused. Roman Knox, that makes sense. Knox Noctis is uh, night. Luke's Lucas is light. Why would Zeus be afraid of Nyx? 
That's interesting. Let's see. I just pulled up a little theoi.com. Let's read a little bit about Nyx. Nyx was the goddess of the night, one of the primordial gods who emerged at the dawn of creation. She was a child of chaos and coupling with Erebos, she produced Aether and Hemera. Uh, so chaos is chaos air, coupling with Erebos darkness, she produced Aether, Aether and light and Hemera day. Alone, she spawned a brood of dark spirits, including the three fates, sleep, death, strife, and pain. The three fates, maybe that's why, because I looked up the three fates uh, recently. Clotho, Clotho, Atropo, Atropos, or Atropo, Clotho, Atropo, Atropos, and Lachesis. Uh, they measure, they spin, measure, and cut the thread of fate. Um, Nyx was an ancient deity usually envisioned as the very substance of the night, a veil of dark mists drawn across the sky to obscure the light of ether, the shining blue of the heavens. Her opposite number was Hemera, day, who scattered the mists of night at dawn. In ancient art, Nyx was depicted as either a winged goddess or charioteer, sometimes crowned with an aureole of dark mists. I don't know if I pronounced that name right, or that word right. So night, according to this, gave birth to light and the day. That makes sense, right? Because in the beginning there was darkness and God said, let there be light, right? I think, I don't remember. <laughs> I should... I know God said, let there be light. So, and then the evening and the, the evening and the day was the first night or something. I should go, but. But I think more than that, it just kind of sort of speaks to the unknown in a way that is I don't want to say it's the receptacle, like day would be the receptacle for all creation. It would be where creations go to be seen or experienced or felt sun energy. But in the moon, that's where they're actually like birthed. That's where they're born. And then they make the transition from night to day and positionality. That's when they come into your life. Okay. Oh, I have four cards on the table. I'll talk about these. They came out when I was shuffling, talking about the job or not having to compromise um, who I am or my integrity, my principles or morals or whatever to get what I want. And being in a space where I'm not going to compromise because I don't have to. And if I have to compromise to get what I want, then I'm going to feel not great when I have it. And that's not something that, like, I don't need to play that whole game. I already know how it's going to end. But these came out. Two of them face up, two of them face down. Now, here's the king of diamonds and the five of diamonds, which is a two and a five. Together make seven. And there's a seven on here. And a 71. Oh, look at that. So it says, oh, oh, look at that. Like, y'all see this? A bell. It says a bell. A bell. You may not be able to see it. A bell. And what did I just point out on her sash? The bells. My mom just got bells the other day. They're smaller than she thought they would be. <laughs> oh, synchronicities abound. I didn't even know she, I was like, why? She ordered them off of Amazon. I'm like, you can go to like the Dollar Tree and get this stuff for a dollar. You can send me to the Dollar Tree. I'll get some more reading glasses. <laughs> um, a bell that brings the physical and intangible into harmony as it pulses out into the universe. Collision or cohesion. Nearly perfect harmony, a crystal clear night of charted stars, triplets in the third trimester. 
Now, Harmony was a message that came through last night. I've been watching, uh, I've been catching up on a lot of shows. And uh, one of them is, I'm not going to say the name of the show because I'm really bad at spoiling things. So if I talk about it, but don't say the show or provide details, then it's less bad, right? There were two teams in this show. And one of the teams had someone that, according to her stats or her skills or her her experiences and abilities, outranked everybody. But her team performed less well than the other team. Her team performed worse than the other team. And she was like, or they were like, well, like, if she's if she as an individual outperforms everybody, then why is it that since she joined our team, like we've been suffering now, their solution to this was to continue their individual approaches, but they had to learn that when you're on a team, it's about teamwork and harmony. And it was shown to her. She was like obsessed with French fries And someone was like, why do you only eat French fries? Like, here. He got her a burger and a drink. She was like, you got to get the meal deal. He was like, you got to get the meal deal, girl. And so she was like, "Uh, no. And he was like, just try. uh." And she was like, fine, one bite. So she broke off a little bit of the hamburger. She was like, oh, this is interesting. So she took another little bit of the hamburger and he was like, okay, when the hamburger flavor starts to settle in, then go for the French fry. And she was like, oh my gosh, like hamburgers and French fries are amazing. And then he was like, you know, once you get enough hamburger and French fry, you go for the drink. And then that completed the whole experience. And so that's how she learned teamwork through, or she learned that she needed to work as a team with her team members through the the meal deal. The, the french fries, the hamburger, and the drink all complementing each other's uh, flavors, right? Speaking of Nyx, though, we here we have a crystal clear night of charted stars, though. Now, triplets in the third trimester is like a unified divine feminine energy about to be born. Oh, my gosh, night being the space where everything is born. Okay. And it's that mother made in crone energy, but all existing within one body at the same time. Look at that bell. A bell that brings the physical and intangible into harmony as it pulses out into the universe. Now, collision or cohesion is about like whether the things will work together or whether they'll fall apart. Now with that harmony, it does depend on everyone doing what it is that they need to be doing. And again, that's that position. That's that positionality. If you're not where you need to be, if you haven't done what you needed to do to have the skills and experiences that you need to have to make something work, it's not going to work. Now, the two cards that were uh, upside down, it's a three and a six. Oh, another king, the king of spades and the jack of clubs. Inspiring others by bold example, proper magnetism and clear intention and clearing of the fog. The internal invited to the external, inner secret revealed, cognition illuminated. So here's another message of... Like, first it was the tangible and the intangible. Now it's the internal and the external. Cognition illuminated with the clearing of the fog. There's another (laughs) little sink. When I go to the store with my brother, whenever we go to the store, he always comments on how the sky is so foggy. (laughs) Last night, even though it snowed, uh, we went to Walmart to get some stuff. And I was like, hey, can we stop by Hardee's? Because my coupon expired a day. So I got some Hardee's, even though I just regretted the McDonald's I ate like two days ago, or three days ago. (laughs) 
Um, and he was like, last night, he was like, oh, it's so cloudy. Like, I'm trying to see some stars. And I was like, I was looking to see if I could see a star outside. And then he made that comment. I was like, okay. Proper magnetism and clear intention, clearing of the fog, cognition illuminated, the internal invited to the external. Now, the thing about an invitation is that it can be refused. And that's what I was talking about. I was like, wait, was I just talking about that or was that before? Because I was saying like things are born in the night and then they make that journey to come to the light between the moon and the sun. And it's like charted skies, charted stars in the sky are like these light junctions. Like if you're on a train or a bus, then from wherever they start, it's all of the stops in that space of night until it gets to where you are. Now, between stars, we have to draw those pathways. We don't see them naturally in the sky. That's why we draw the, the lines on star charts to outline what the constellation actually is. Now, depending on how you connect the dots, you could make the constellation something entirely different. I want to see what these are. I want to see. I want to make another Dysology deck to uh, and next time like actually in, uh, to include some of these things. Hold mm. <gasps> away. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm like, excuse me, I, I do want to come here. Thank you. I keep saying I need to write this down or take a picture or something before. <gasps> It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> well, speaking of timing and positionality, it's gone. My little um my little Lenormand resource, it's not here anymore. There's nothing here. I actually, like, before, it was redirecting me in a lot of weird ways. And when I got it back, I was like, oh, I need to, like, write these down or something before I lose them. They gone, girl. Let me see, because I had it on both of my devices. So I'll see if I can pull it up on this one. I mean, probably won't be able to. But why did I see? Why did I just do that? Why did I just do that? Yeah, there's nothing here. Whatever you were looking for doesn't... Oh, well, can't read the rest now. Whatever you were looking for no longer exists. That's fine. I'll just get another chart. Or I can pull out my Lenormand cards and come up with something myself. And then also... Um, like, all I need is the correspondences between the playing cards and the Norman. But I could also use that as an opportunity to define the rest of them. I think I'll do that. Because the Norman works off of the six through the aces. And so that's the twos through the fives that I would have the ability to put a little bit of something on. In four different suits, though, that's a lot. I mean, I got time right now, right? Between job searches and things of that nature. Excuse me. Lenormand. Playing cards. Da da da.
Give me one moment. King of Spades, Jack of Diamonds. Here we go. So, the Jack of Clubs is the whip. The King of Spades is the home. I should, no, that's the King of Hearts. I was like, uh, King of Spades is the lily. The lily and the whip. Ooh, that sounds like some kind of intimate activity to me. But I feel like it's that it, it almost reads as, again, it's that like not compromising one's own integrity. And for a lot of people, because the, the lily has an energy of a sort of divinity to it. And the whip gives me an energy of discipline, but it, it reads as self-discipline because it's all of the things that the lily does or doesn't do that keeps it that divine lily type of energy. Bottom of the deck is another six, the six of clubs, a shift in the wind, a leaf caught in an eddy, and the birth of a new language. Now, the leaf caught in an eddy, that's what happens when you have wind blowing primarily like between buildings. And so you'll see like the little swirl of leaves and whatever like trash or garbage is there that just like blows in a circle. And so although the winds of the winds are shifting, depending on how you're positioned, if you're positioned between a rock and a hard place, what it causes you to do is to eddy and to circle the drain instead of following the course of the wind to your destination. That's where this lily and the whip comes in. Like that bold example that we're leading by that having a an invitation strong enough that the internal makes itself seen on the external, giving us that illuminated cognition, revealing to us our own inner secrets. And that's what clears the fog, the fog that's been rolled in for almost a year now. But again, if we're caught in the eddy, there's no way to be properly magnetized and to have all of our intentions sort of known. Because what I got on here to talk about is that it seems that when we are these spiritual beings having temporary human experiences, and when we take as above, so below types of mentalities, but we don't at the same time take as below, so above, what it kind of does is it sets us up to be like these elevators for lower or negative energies to like latch onto and to ride as we try to go up within our own lives. And I think that's why it's important to address things instead of bypassing them or ignoring them. We live in a land in the middle. We live in a world in between, between the higher and lower forces. And so you can't be only trained on one or you can't focus on the higher neglect everything else and expect to get there because you are the higher for something lower than you. And it's like, okay, well, what are you bringing with you? What are you not facing? What are you not addressing? What energies are using you as a ride to get to wherever it is you're going or wherever it is you think you're going? And that's the thing about duality. That's why duality will like always exist on Earth. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be these extremely polarized things. But there is a dual nature to everything. Paradox and contradiction is just kind of sort of inherent. Because again, there is an above here and there is also a below here. We're in between. And duality it in of itself, I feel like it creates the space through which we live and we breathe and we experience life. 
if duality didn't exist, it's like nothing would exist outside of the one or source consciousness. Like there would only be God, right? That's why one of the first things he did was to create the night and the day. A space for things to exist between, like a, a box or a piece of paper to draw on. Because when it's all one thing, if it's all one color, you can't differentiate one thing from the other thing. And it's not that we're necessarily supposed to, but again, we live individual lives. We have individual goals, individual aspirations and individual experiences. And it's not to neglect them or to reject them in favor of a homogenous gray, but it's to appreciate the spectrum. And again, it's like, you don't have to like, go all the way to one side or the other. But that's just what it felt like. It felt like being like an elevator or a truck, a bandwagon for lower energies when you refuse to address them. Because, you know, as below, so above. As above, so below. That relationship goes both ways. And there is a below us. Which is why we have the opportunity to address a lot of the underbelly and the darkness that exists within multiple areas of society, entertainment, politics, everyday life, uh, like uh, what, money, probably a lot of things to address and to resolve so that we don't take it with us. But, you know, to each their own, everyone has a choice. I'm gonna get a TV fortune card because I love these things. <laughs> see I was like I haven't done a face video in a long time this is one of those instances where I wish like y'all could see that this card just fell out like I split the deck in half these are the two halves of the deck this is the one I was shuffling this is the card that just fell out the bell you see this is the bell look I was like because, like, if you if you watched me, when I was looking at the bells on her sash, I paused for a second. I was like, no, I paused because it reminds me of, like, a clarion bell. I w I've been catching up on shows. There was this, a goddess clarion of music and stuff. I had a dream about a clarion bell a while ago. So it made me think of that dream and what was going on in that dream. That's why I paused. But then, you know, a bunch of bell messages sort of came out. In that dream, I was given a clarion bell. Somebody else was jealous because they wanted it. I didn't really care. I think it ended up breaking at some point. And I tried to do uh, a Katie Heron, like, you get a piece of the bell, and you get a piece of the bell, and we all have a piece of the bell. But that person was like, no, that's like your bell. I don't want it. It's yours. You got it. I'm like, okay, girl, I don't even know what this is. And then maybe some Metatron stuff happened after that. I don't know. Anyway. The bell is an announcement. Speaking of Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Philly has the bell, right? With the crack in it or whatever. I'm taking it back to Ben Franklin. Oh, the bottom of the deck is the moon. Changes in your life. So here are changes in your life. Here's the announcement. What announces change? I think that's something to think about. Because I think what announces change, especially in a moon type of way instead of a sun way, what announces change in that way is for a situation to occur, but for a different result to be reached. And so although we encounter a similar situation, going back to what I was talking about within my own personal life, because I've been having a lot as I enter the workforce, all of the concerns that I had about it before that depressed me AF, like those 
those things no longer like paralyze me to the point that I don't do what it is that I need to do. Right. The concerns are still there. The concerns are still valid and legitimate, although a lot of them a lot less so now because of what transpired. And I just fixed my bubble chart because I was way off. I was like two days off. Two days is a thing for me, apparently. Um, Because I had my surgery. So now a lot of the stuff that I was worried about, I don't necessarily have to worry about anymore. But there are still like lingering concerns. Now, a lot of those lingering concerns won't actually be addressed. It won't be proven to me that I don't have to be so concerned or worried about them until I actually am in that situation. And in that moment, it's like, oh, like, I didn't even have to worry about this. Because before then, it's just hearsay. We're not dealing with the bell and the sun. It's the bell and the moon. It's the space where things are born before they are seen. Now... When you're pregnant, there are certain things that you should do and certain things that you should not do for the health of your baby. Right? That's not necessary. I feel like a piece of that is kind of sort of what I wanted, but that's not where I want to go with that. Because it's like the thing is already born. We just don't see it yet. But I guess the question is, like, for something that is unseen, how would it announce itself? For something that has changed, how will it announce that it has changed? If it were a person who has legitimately changed, when they come to you, they may look like the same person. But just because they look the same on the outside doesn't mean that that change hasn't transpired on the inside doesn't mean that they haven't addressed everything that lied within their darkness, the moon, that they needed to address and resolve to get off, to to remove from the elevator or the escalator or the truck or the train that is their light from star to star, junction to junction. Doesn't mean that those things haven't hopped off at some point along the way. Maybe that's why the star is about healing. Okay, I like that work. Um... But even on the outside, like they may sort of like look the same. And so the change would come when a situation presents itself, when they make a choice or a decision that they haven't made before, when they start exhibiting behaviors that they didn't before, or when they stop choosing certain things that they used to choose or stop exhibiting behaviors that they always exhibited. And that's like, that's the only way to really know that those changes have transpired and taken place because it happens in a place that we don't see. So to us on the outside, it looks as if it's remained the same, but it hasn't, it's changed. Thanks to that bell that pulses out into the universe. Oh, the rainbow and the coins. Bringing things into harmony and balance and things like that. Charting the stars in the night. Sky. If I had a mind to, I would go through the constellations. Oh, the hands. Okay. And another card that went face down. If I had a mind to, I would go through the constellations and just draw up or connect the dots in a different way just to see, you know, what would be possible. So the card that came out is the hand in need of help, assistance and guidance. Eh, A lot of people are probably in need of help, assistance or guidance. I think hands also, the mo- the movement of a hand can signify a lot of different things, right? Like you can wave to someone. You can wave hello and you can wave goodbye. That's like the same gesture, gesture, whatever. Same gesture. But depending on the context, it's either a hello or a goodbye. 
Is it like ciao? Is ciao like that? It could either be hello or goodbye, depending on the, the context, right? If it precedes an interaction, it's probably taken to mean hello. If it comes after the conclusion of that interaction, it's probably taken to be goodbye. An outstretched hand, an outreached hand like this one, also probably asking for something, help, assistance, whatever. An outstretched hand with something in it is offering that thing. The point being, it's something that we need to ask for and we need to gesture properly to get what it is that we want to communicate the meaning. Also, we need to have context around the situation to know if it means one thing or the other. Going back to the last time I used these cards with the weeping willow, the whale and the whale, going back to that homophone energy. Words that sound the same, homophone, yeah. Homonym is probably words that are spelled the same, but mean something different. Because, like, um, what's the word for names? Not, no, well, yeah, nomenclature, like nomenclature. The word. The other card that came out is the kite. The kite is vacation. In need of a vacation. Yes, that's me. <laughs> Um, no key with this kite this time, though. Speaking of the last time I saw these, the key was with the kite. And the key in the kite is that electricity. The key in the kite is that burst of inspiration from something above that is trying to come to the below. But without anything to ground that energy, it just dissipates and returns to the above, which is why having a healthy root is important and that we don't just focus on the third eye and the crown chakra, right? Because you can have crown and third eye all day long, but if there isn't anything within you that grounds that energy, then it'll just dissipate and go wherever. There's also, without the key, there's this energy of trying to replicate something that won't work. The key was an integral part of this. Again, it's, it's that harmony. And we did have nearly perfect harmony in this card up here. It's nearly there, but without the key, there's nothing to conduct the electricity. There's nothing to entice the lightning to strike this kite. Now, if the kite is the highest thing or the tallest thing in that area, a lot more likely to be struck or stricken. But the key is important. And without the key, I feel like the kite would just like burn. It's also giving me the energy of it's like a solenoid, a capacitor. I think it's a capacitor. I don't remember which electrical component it is. It's when you have like a wire and you wrap it around something metal. Because what it does is it's like as, as that energy is in one place and as it runs that coil, it amplifies. And you can use that to magnetize something. Proper magnetism and clear intention, right? You can use that to create a magnet when the current has like a direction and it establishes an, an electromagnetic field. But without the key, without the metal, there's nothing to hold this current. Grounding, metals, metals come from the ground. Bottom of this deck is... The fair woman. Uh, dealings or relationships with a woman with blonde, gray, or white hair. This is like so stereotypically Pleiadian to me, I guess, maybe. I mean, if we're talking about kites and hands, maybe some people are reaching out to the Pleiades for help. And Pleiades is like, girl, until y'all fix that mess down there, we can't do nothing. 
Like, what good does it do for us to come down there and to help you clean this if it's only going to become a mess again? Or what good does it have for us to give these things to you if, if it's like a mess? Like, if you don't have any room for a baby grand piano, girl, I'm not going to give you a baby grand piano because then what, it'll sit outside and it'll weather and wither. We have to have room to accept the things that we're asking for. And we have to be grounded enough to be able to hold a current, to be able to hold a charge, to be able to really properly align our own electromagnetic field to attract what it is that we want. And as long as we continue to ignore the things below us while continuously reaching higher and higher and higher, Typo. Why are they talking about Typo? <laughs> I love Typo. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it's like we're, we're attached to the kite, but these the winds that have come in at the bottom of the deck, the winds of change, we're eddying. Or we're caught up in that eddy. So we're swirling, attached to this kite, but the thing about electricity is that it needs to be grounded. If there's no ground, it's like the, the circuit is left open. It's an incomplete path. It can't do what it's supposed to do. And so what will happen is it'll arc to... It's like it'll continue arcing until it reaches something that is grounded. And then it will complete that pathway. And it is the grounded thing that will have that electromagnetic field generated. Right? And lightning takes the path of least resistance, like a lot of things. And so there's been a lot of resistance. It's almost like calcium buildup or like a plaque buildup or a clogged artery. It's like through the space of our environment and living life, we naturally build up a lot of resistance in certain areas that keeps the lightning, that keeps the light, that keeps that enlightenment or whatever from striking these vital points within ourselves to actually lead us to a more complete <sighs> awakening. I don't want to use the word awakening. And that's like, that's the reason why sometimes we can't get out of a situation what we could get to actually move forward to release the baggage, to let go of the things that we don't need to take with us where we're going, and to also let go of the things that make us too heavy to get there. It's like a lot of times, you know, people will say that the Bible is, there's like, there are parables in the Bible. Some of it is metaphor. And it's like whenever it comes to spirit, there are certain things that don't necessarily translate. So whenever I hear someone, especially hearing from spirit or connected to spirit, say like our bodies need to be light, like what I hear isn't necessarily I need to eat vegan and eat clean and lose as much weight as I can so I can make the shift because we're more than just a physical body. We're a mental body, an emotional body, a spiritual body, an astral body. We have a lot of bodies. Those need to be light as well. And if we're spiritually, energetically, emotionally congested, and if we have these almost... What, what, it's like... I can't think of the word, but it's, it's, the, it's where these blockages are generated because they keep us heavy in these areas. And again, when the lightning comes through, since there's so much resistance there, it takes another path. 
It's like if, you know, the chakras are supposed to be aligned, the lightning comes in, you get it through your crown and boom, it goes right to the root. But if your heart is unaligned and if your sacral is unaligned, just those two, it goes down, 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 diverts, and then from there takes whatever path it can to get to the root. If your root is even like set up to where it'll like disperse that instead of storing it and then causing something to spark and catch fire. And it's like, if it diverts at the heart, then it's not necessarily going to hit the solar plexus, even though the solar plexus could be aligned. Because that junction in the path, it has to avoid. And so path of least resistance may not take it through the solar plexus. It could have it all the way over here. And that's why I say, you know, if one of the chakras are unaligned, then they're all unaligned because it's the system that it's like, it's like your body. If you have one organ that's going through it, it has the potential to affect the way your body functions as a whole. Sometimes not just the processes that involve that specific organ, especially things get backed up if they get backed up, blocked up, whatever. And so 2020, or what we're coming into, is an opportunity to break up those blockages. Oh, pseudomonas. I was just thinking about pseudomonas like two days ago. Pseudomonas are film-forming bacteria, and so they'll come together and they'll form a film so things can't get through it. And so like that sometimes could be why they're as dangerous as they are, because when they come together, they form a film that creates these blockages. Or if you have like one or two of them, it's not that they necessarily produce something toxic, necessarily. It's more of what happens when they come together, which is what happens when these blockages sort of start to grow and accumulate until they become something with so much resistance that the light can't get through it. And that's something that we have to fix within ourselves. But yeah, that's why I say that. If one chakra is unaligned, they're, they're all... It's not that they're necessarily all unaligned, but it affects the functioning of them all as one whole. Because it's like, even though they are different subsystems, it's one mega system, one structure. That's one body. You still have your emotional body and your mental body. All of those bodies need to be like... It's like when they say, like in the Bible, when it says that we're made in the image of God, well, it's like, well, if God isn't a man or a woman or a 3D physical thing, then there is no physical image for us to be made in. So there's a different image of that God energy that we are made in. Maybe spiritual, made in the spiritual image. What is a spiritual image? Who knows? Keeping loved ones close. Sure, thank you. Um, I have to look into it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and that's why I like it's not that I'm necessarily opposed to eating cleaner or whatever. But there's more, and like the physical body is still a body, so <laughs> it still, you know, needs some attention. Um, but it's more than just the physical body. And some people will be like, so on that, but mentally, emotionally, or spiritually be like heavy AF. And it's like, you're putting all of your eggs in this one basket. And you need at least like four baskets with a decent number of eggs to get where you're going. Because this one basket, you hand to one person. If you only bring one basket, she's like, well, it's like I was playing Borderlands and there was a mission to get some coffee. And he was like, well, you know, the dude was like, oh, we're like a, a green operation. So we don't provide coffee cups. You're going to have to bring your own cup. If you don't have a cup to bring, you're not going to get the coffee. 
And if you got to, like, if you're delivering coffee, if you're getting coffee for multiple people and you scrounge up one cup, what are the other three people going to have for their coffee? Everything is more interconnected than we. Uh, that's not new. We know that things are interconnected. Anyway, long story short, as above, so below, true. As below, so above, also true. We live in a land and the in-between and the middle. We have to look at the above and below, and we have to address both. We can't neglect the below and only look towards the above because as below, so above. You are the above of the below. You are the below of the above. We carry more than we think when we take that approach, is all I'm saying. And like what's communicated in energy, or what's communicated is energy and intention. And if it's like you get you get what you give. So that's what I got. Um, the bell and the moon. Interesting. The hand, the kite, and the... Oh, fair woman. Yeah, sorry. I was like, what were they? The hand, the kite, and the fair woman. Oh, also, like, there is a feminine energy. When I was talking about triplets in the third trimester being... Um, a more unified divine feminine energy. I wouldn't necessarily say that fair woman is divine feminine energy. But it's definitely not like as a whole, as a piece, maybe not as a whole, though. I guess the moon. Moon could be divine feminine energy. More as a whole. And the moon was also in one of those shows that I've been uh, watching lately. They accidentally blew up the moon. <laughs> and then they put them, they accidentally blew up the moon. They put the moon back together. And then they moved the moon. And the moon was mad. They moved the moon. She was mad. So. It threw off magic in the show. And it took them a long time to figure out that it was the moon that was upset <laughs> that she had been moved. <laughs> There's like, why is magic not working? Like, it should be working. And then like, oh, the moon is upset that we moved her. So, yeah. Final messages. It's that time in the video. I wonder if my brother was up. I wasn't enjoying Borderlands 3 until I changed my character. Now I am enjoying it a lot, and I actually want to play the game, which is cool, because I just spent money on it. <laughs> the experience I was having before was less than optimal, less than ideal. Here we go. Oh! It's the... F oh, two cards. It's the Five of Diamonds with the Eight of Hearts. Nearly perfect harmony, a crystal clear night of charted stars, triplets in the third trimester, an explosive vision, a nurturing light, and burning passion. Now, the Eight of Hearts is one of the few cards that's only single-digit numbers. Let's see what the Eight of Hearts is. That's a Five of Pentacles, Eight of Cups synergy. The Five of Pentacles, Five of Realms is like being in between. A nudge is enough to tip us over the mountain. If we're at the top of the roller coaster, a, a nudge is enough to make us go forward or to make us fall back. The Eight of Cups, Eight of Realms, not Realms, Eight of Essences is an energy where we're coming out of the harmony of the Six. We haven't yet reached the mastery of the 10. The seven puts us in a space of knowing that there's more. 
the eight can be the tipping point between the six and the ten. Where either we say it's too hard and we try to go back to the six. You can't go back to the six. Because once you know that there's more, the six, is it's not going to be what it was. Because you've already experienced more beyond the six. But sometimes we make that choice and we make that sacrifice. It's too hard. I'd rather go back. So we try to go back to the six. Or we move forward to the ten. And that's where, like, that dedication really comes in at the eight. That's where we decide to go even further beyond. Or not. So, the Eight of Hearts. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm going to show you all this, just in case you don't believe me. You see, you probably won't see it. Oh, wait, there you go. There you go. You see eight hearts. It's the moon. The eight of hearts is the moon. So there is the moon again. And it's, again, in the space of the things that we can't necessarily see. Bottom of the deck is the four of diamonds. Dawn before the first day of a new world. An old earth passed away. A breathtaking sight. 44, 13, 2, 6, 1, and 2. So there's a 4, 4, 4 on this card. There's a 4, 4... Four, 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 four in the 13 on this card. <laughs> and B4, so that's another four. <laughs> um, dawn before the first day of a new world. Moon energy. It's born before we see it. Right? Like, even when we're giving birth. So a baby technically isn't born until it exits... Uh, the the its mother's body or its host. I don't know why I almost said host. Its host's body. It's not born until it exits, but the baby is. It's it's pretty much already there before it makes the journey out of the birth canal or before it's removed. Right. And then we get a final message here. Ooh, the ram. The ram is behind the hand and the kite. I accidentally picked it up. I was just trying to flip these over. The ram is a stubborn, aggressive person. Is that me? Am I stubborn and aggressive? Definitely stubborn. Can be aggressive. But it's headstrong. And that's the thing about Aries energy. Aries exists in a space before limitation has been established. Right? If Aries is the newborn, everything is like new. So there's nothing. It hasn't yet learned that like you can't do this and you can't do that. It's basically free of resistance. Aries is lightning child energy. Because there's no resistance. Lightning is free to flow in any direction. And then it becomes more of how it entered and where it exits. Rather than navigating the maze along the way. So, Okay. All right. All right. There we go. Oof. <laughs> That's interesting. This card almost came out. Oh, it's an astral house. I'll take it. Okay, so the card that came out is Casket. Sun conjuncted Pluto, like, the other day. I talked about that. Was that here? I'm sure it was. We got the Casket and Happiness. <laughs> That's interesting. The Casket says, someone going out of your life or the end of a situation. Okay, so maybe this is someone going out of your life, the end of a situation that will bring happiness. There's an energy of something here that's very, very, very burdensome or heavy. It's almost an energy like 
something was already in the casket. So you've been carrying a casket or trying to carry a casket. The situation was overdue for a transformation. And when this thing leaves, it opens you up to find your happiness. And things are a lot less restricted. There's a lot more fluidity and flexibility and movement. And at the same time, with you, us, no longer carrying it, it now has to emerge out of its casket if it wants to go anywhere. And so sometimes there are people that we meet that encourage us, who love us, support us, guide us in a lot of ways that we look to with a sort of, I don't want to say reverence, but it feels like reverence because it's like we come to depend and rely on that person for things that they cannot give us. We come to depend and rely on them for things that we need to do and address within ourselves, things that no one else can do outside of you. And so again, when they stop carrying the casket, it can put us in a space to be reborn. Instead of being in this like stasis death phase. Because as long as we can rely on someone else to do things for us, it's like we do, you know? Bottom of the deck is the younger man. Dealings or relationships with a younger man. Younger man, less established masculine energy, maybe divine masculine energy, since, you know, we've in some ways have a shortage of that on the planet. So the older man is probably the lesser aligned, less than divine masculine energy. The younger one is probably a more divine masculine energy. And that's like masculine energy is in the casket. When feminine energy stops carrying it, it has to make the choice to basically be reborn and to emerge from the casket, that younger, more divine energy. Now, it's a very Isis Osiris type of energy. Isis had to gather the pieces of Osiris. And then she took him to the temple, put him back together, performed the ritual. He came back to life. That's also a sink, the dead coming back to life. Now, when there was someone who was immortal and the whole thing was like, if the dead come back to life, then they drain the life out of the living. So the living become the dead basically. But then if they come back to life because that doorway is open, then I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there was someone who was immortal and he was like, you know, we can interact because I cannot die. So it was this space where both the living and the dead were together. That's not necessarily going to be the case here. It just puts it in a position to transform. It's like if you want to keep moving, if you want to keep going somewhere, now you're going to have to learn to stand on your own two legs and to walk or to run or to fly or to swim or to burrow underground and keep digging like Bugs Bunny, I don't know, however you move. You're going to have to learn that method of modality or that modality of movement. And I think it's going to be that which brings happiness to whatever was inside the casket. But again, like we all have to do it ourselves. So that's what I got. I hope you have a good whatever whenever you see this. I hope you're acting in alignment to make it even better because for those who believe in align with 
and proceed in accordance to better the best and miracles and miraculous things it's constantly happening and possible maybe happening in ways that you don't even know until you get there and then you're like oh positionality (laughs) all right bye thank you zada for stopping in i'll catch y'all whenever i catch you